Hey, what's up? Hey, Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm going to be showcasing emulators on the new iPhone 6S. If at any time you want to learn how to get any of the emulators I play in this video, check the description to learn how to get them on your iOS device. With the new iPhone 6S, Apple stated that everything has changed. However, looking at the device, it looks almost identical to an iPhone 6, but it's what's on the inside that matters. Specifically, I'm referring to the new A9 chip, and we're going to be seeing how this affects all the emulators we know and love. If you're excited to see the emulators in action on an iPhone 6s, please hit that like button. And now, without any further ado, let's head into the showcase. All right, we begin with GBA for iOS, probably the most popular emulator on any iOS device. However, despite its name, GBA for iOS also plays Game Boy and Game Boy Color games along with the obvious GBA games. Now, for the sake of time in this video, I'm only going to be playing one game on each emulator, although many of them actually play different consoles. As you can see, GBA for iOS and here is running extremely well on the new iPhone 6S and that's to no surprise because GBA for iOS has always run great across all devices and something that I noticed and I find very exceptional is that because GBA for iOS has a haptic feedback setting, it feels even better with the new Force Touch engine installed on the iPhone 6S. So overall, GBA for iOS is still the same, but it's been perfect, so how can it be better? Moving on, we have Provenance, which is not a very popular emulator, but definitely competes for one of the top emulators on iOS. Provenance is a multi-core emulator, and just like GBA for iOS, it plays a lot of different consoles. However, Provenance has a much wider range and plays a ton of different things, from Super Nintendo to Sega Genesis, and much more. As you can see, I'm showcasing the Sega Genesis engine, and it looks and sounds amazing. And just like GBA for iOS, Provenance also has haptic feedback so that when you touch a button, it really feels like you're touching a button, especially with the new Force Touch. Now, I've never had a problem with Provenance, but I have heard of some issues with other users due to speed or lag. However, with the new iPhone 6S and its A9 chip, I can bet that it'll run a amazing whichever game or whichever console you're playing. Provenance is a great emulator and if you're not using it, you should probably start on it because I love this thing and I'm sure you will as well. Next up, we have Floppy Cloud, an application that actually snuck its way onto the App Store back in the day. Floppy Cloud isn't the best emulator, but at its time it was pretty awesome because it was on the App Store and as many of you all know, Apple does not allow emulators onto the App Store, but the reason it was able to get into the App Store is because it was a hidden emulator inside of a file manager. Now, because of this and the fact that Floppy Cloud hasn't been updated since it was initially pushed onto the App Store, it's not the best. And if you're going to play Super Nintendo or Nintendo Entertainment System games, I highly recommend that you use Provenance instead, but Floppy Cloud is still definitely viable for your average use, as you can see and hear from the video. Continuing on, we have NPS for iOS, another application that unfortunately is no longer in development, but it's still a pretty awesome emulator and one of the only emulators on iOS that allows you to play Nintendo DS games. Now, NDS for iOS runs better on newer devices, and as of the release of the video, the iPhone 6S being the latest iPhone, it definitely runs true to that. As you can see, it's running at nearly 60 frames per second, and its audio is a bit choppy, but it's only something that you'll notice unless you're really paying attention. All in all, on the new iPhone 6S, NDS for iOS runs almost flawlessly, and it's a shame that it's no longer in development because I could only imagine how great this thing would run if the developers were still pushing updates. Nevertheless, if you want to play some Nintendo DS games on your iOS device, specifically your iPhone 6, then you'll have no trouble doing it on the new iPhone 6. 
Next, we have a very unique emulator called Gameplay Color, which plays Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, as the name suggests. Now, what's extremely unique about this emulator is that it's not an application. Rather, it's a web app, and it can be played offline. With that being said, Apple can literally never shut down this emulator unless they shut down Gameplay Color's website, which would be highly illegal. So, Gameplay Color has been around for a while and will stay for quite some time and is honestly a pretty good emulator. Now, with the new iPhone 6S, you can hear some choppiness in the audio and that may be just because it's not compatible with the device yet. And I'm sure the Gameplay Color developers will work on that because besides that, everything works flawlessly. The only thing that I could say is not amazing about this emulator is that it doesn't have a lot of settings and it plays just like a regular Game Boy. Like you can save, you can do all these things as opposed to GBA for iOS which has a multitude of settings. But if GBA for iOS is never not working and you still want to get your fix of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, Gameplay Color is definitely the way to go. Nearing the end of the list, we have Remote Files. Similar to Floppy Cloud, Remote Files made its way onto the App Store a couple of years ago, but unlike Floppy Cloud, Remote Files only plays Super Nintendo games, yet it does it pretty well, and I honestly prefer this emulator over Floppy Cloud if I'm gonna play Super Nintendo games, but like I stated with Floppy Cloud, if you're gonna play Super Nintendo games, I would recommend Provenance. Nevertheless, Remote File still does the job of emulating Super Nintendo games with a pretty decent amount of features. As you can see, it plays and sounds pretty well, but the fact that it's an emulator that hasn't been updated in years still leaves it a little obsolete in comparison to Provenance. Nevertheless, if Provenance is ever not working and you still want to play some Super Nintendo games, I would definitely recommend Remote Files as it's pretty good. Finally, we have PPSSPP, one of the better emulators on iOS. However, it doesn't run the best on non-jailbroken phones. Even with the new iPhone 6S and the A9 chip, there's no way that PPSSPP will run full speed unless you're playing a game that is very old and small in file size. And that's because PPSSPP is made to run on JIT, which can only be accessed if your iOS device is jailbroken. And unfortunately, as of the release of this video, the iPhone 6S has not been jailbroken, specifically iOS 9 and above. So you cannot have access to the full speed gameplay of PPSS PP. But that does not take away from the emulator. It's a great emulator. It just sucks that you can't play it at full speed. And some games will be deceiving because at some point you can get to full speed as you can see from this gameplay of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. But when you actually get to the juice of the game which requires a lot of hardware from the emulator, it just doesn't run as well. But nevertheless, if you ever want to play a PSP emulator, I highly recommend you jailbreak and play PPSSPP. And that's all the emulators available to a non-jailbroken iPhone 6S as of the release of this video. I hope you found this video enjoyable or informative. If you did, please leave a like as it's greatly appreciated and subscribe for more awesome videos like this one and I will see you guys then.